It isn't easy to choose champagne. Firstly, it's expensive, so we can't really fool around. Additionally, the quality differences and labeling jargon make it needlessly complex. Let's understand the five most important things to pay attention to on a bottle of champagne. The number one most important thing on a bottle of champagne is the sweetness level. And the most popular style is called Brut, and they're dry. Wines labeled dry, on the other hand, are actually a bit fruit forward. Finally, the last two terms, demi-sec and do, mean sweet. And for context, demi-sec is less than half the sweetness of Coca-Cola. Champagne styles. We're talking about grapes here. There are three major grapes in Champagne. Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot's relative, Pinot Meunier. The most common champagne is a blend of all three grapes and it looks like a white wine. Beyond the classic three grape blend, we see three other variations. Blanc de Blanc, meaning white of whites. It uses Chardonnay. These have lemony and creamy cheesy aromas and they're a great choice for beginners. Blanc de Noir, meaning white of blacks, is a Pinot only champagne. I find these wines to have subtle red fruit and earthy mushroom aromas. They're definitely complex. Finally, Rosé Champagne is a brilliant pink color and it's made by actually blending in about 10% red wine. So which produces the toastiest, nuttiest styles of champagne? Hmm. For this, we need to add age. Vintage versus non-vintage champagne. A process called tirage is what gives champagne its nutty, toasty aromas. Top champagnes age on tirage in their cellars for more than five years. Strangely, this important detail isn't actually available on most bottles of champagne, but the vintage is gonna give you a clue. Vintage dated wines are required to age for a minimum of three years, whereas non-vintage wines age for just 15 months. So if you want a more toasty style, look for those vintage bottled wines. That is a clue. Grand Cru Champagne. Another word you see on a label is cru, usually prefixed by premier or grand, and it's talking about vineyards. Champagne is a cold place. The best vineyards here sit on slopes where they soak up the sun and dry out quickly after a rain. Wines labeled Grand Cru come from the vineyards located on perfect south-facing slopes. Now, and a little aside about this, a lot has changed since this whole Grand Cru system was made. Originally, it was for champagne houses to easily classify and pay for what they felt was fair market value of grapes. A lot has changed since then. So let's talk champagne producers. If you like supporting small independent companies, there is a clue on the label. In small print, you'll find two letters. It tells you the type of producer, and in Champagne, there are essentially three types. Maisons, the big guys, cooperatives, the medium guys, and vignerons, the little guys. Maisons make up the majority of Champagne we're gonna find in the store. Producers like Moet, Veuve Clicquot, Perrier, Boulanger, these are all what we call negociants, who buy all or some of their grapes from growers. The benefits of negociants is that they're highly consistent. Next up, we have cooperatives. This is a grower's co-op that pools all its resources together and makes wine under a single brand. These wines are very consistent as well. Finally, we have the grower producers who do things independently. There are thousands of growers in Champagne and hundreds of grower producers. This is the most innovative and creative category in all of Champagne. I hope this helps you drink better wine. And if you want to learn more while you taste along, check out the Wine Folly Club. We taste delicious wines and share knowledge about wine with myself and my cadre of wine pros. Ultimately, Champagne is a benchmark in sparkling wine and well worth the taste. Happy tasting, until next time, peace out.